question. What's the difference between Johnson & Johnson, Medtronic, and Purdue? Go. Give up? There is no difference. They all are settling or have settled major lawsuits in regards to injury or death to people. This is Big Pharma at its darkest. Let's break it down. I am in the US, dubbed land of lawsuits by many, and many are frivolous. I give you that. But many more are egregious and concerning, and they are all tied by a common thread. See if you can figure it out before this video ends with a comment down below. Aria Bendix reports that Deborah Smith wears wigs permanently now due to chemotherapy after effects from the ovarian cancer that was discovered in 2003. The cause? Johnson & Johnson talc powder usage for more than 15 years. Johnson & Johnson has been milking the judicial system, dragging out suits like Smith's, as well as trying to evade settlement costs with a subsidiary creation they created that then filed for bankruptcy immediately. This attempt was thrown out on February 4th, 2023. Smith cites more than 25 case studies dating back to 1982 warning of carcinogenic effects of talc powder. Smith joins 37 other cases against Johnson & Johnson. Cases like this are not abnormal. NPR's Brian Mann wrote in March of 2022 how Purdue, the manufacturer of Oxycontin, the pain relieving opioid, a settlement for all their damages to the tune of six billion dollars. Oh, and the Sacklers as part of the settlement didn't have to admit guilt or wrongdoing for the lives ruined and taken away. Justice, think again, especially considering the Sackler family raked in ten billion dollars of profit from Oxycontin. Their aggressive marketing and backdoor dealings to get doctors subscribed their drug heavily contributes to the one trillion dollar cost to the USA's opioid crisis we find ourselves in. Backdoor dealings aren't just for big pharma medications, oh no. Medical devices count too, and against our veterans no less. ProPublica detailed a whistleblower from Medtronic that exposed at Robert J. Dole Veterans Affairs Medical Center in Wichita, Kansas, Carrie Kirk. Another representative for Medtronic was allegedly having a blast in the patient's operation room as a groin incision was being seen as pumped full of medical devices. Devices that each carry their own risk and are usually encouraged to be used sparingly to about one to three per operation. Kirk's uncovered text messages saying, quote, just used 12 drug-coated balloons. Kirk texted her colleague, does that mean I owe you dollar sign dollar sign? He responded, that's what I'm thinking, laughing emoji. She said, and now 14 balloons, embarrassed emoji, winking tongue out emoji, but only one stent so far, question mark. So far, exclamation point. Two and a half hours later, the text continued saying, long case, Kirk's colleague texted. Is it looking okay? It is, she said. Thought we were done a few times. Now he's going back in to cut again. A little while later, she texted, 17. He texted back, what is that emoji? Uh, freaking, Cross out, exclamation, excited, emoji, happy, laughing emoji, whatever. Let's get back to the fucking video. It was discovered that many Veterans Affairs employees, doctors, were compensated for this with fancy dinners and other gifts to incentivize using more devices than necessary or push to use some even if not needed. It was a kickback rich system that only caused more harm to patients than good, with some even requiring amputation from medical complications. Medtronic's own subsidiary, quote, Covidian paid $13 million to settle claims with the US Department of Justice. That it paid kickbacks to healthcare institutions that used its mechanical blood clot devices. In 2019, the same subsidiary paid $17 million to resolve allegations. That it provided in-kind marketing support to doctors using its vein products. And in 2020, Medtronic paid more than eight million dollars to settle claims that representatives had paid kickbacks to a neurosurgeon, including scores of lavish meals at a restaurant that the doctor owned, to induce him to purchase the company's medication pumps." End quote. It's disheartening to read all this pay-to-play behavior, especially against our veterans. But it follows the common thread interwoven throughout this video. Did you happen to catch it yet? The common thread here, if you didn't realize it, or comment it below, is greed. In which case, what is your problem? Stop it, get some help. You see, there is runaway greed by these huge monolithic companies like Medtronic, Purdue, and Johnson & Johnson. The sales are so enriching that it just makes financial sense to settle lawsuits or run out the clock on those same lawsuits than to do things right and buy the book 
in the first place. People's well-being put at the forefront. Poppycock, old sport. This is big pharma. Their big lie that shouldn't shock you is their lack of accountability, non-existent sense of morals, and profit over people mindset. Think about it this way. If you make a billion or two a year in profit, what is a couple million to pay off for some debts? Unfortunately, it isn't secluded to just the darkness of Big Pharma. Oh no, no, good sir. See recent events with the rail line disaster in East Palestine, Ohio by Norfolk Southern as of the making of this video. Even more unfortunately is this lack of accountability and willingness to change behaviors that isn't affixed to just too big to fail companies like we mentioned. The sickness extends to individual people, especially influencers, creators like financial YouTubers and dating groups. I made several videos already in this space, but start with this one right here, big boy, to begin to understand the full story. Like, comment, subscribe for more content similar to this one.